hearing the messages that we've been preaching. Uh, um, I preached the first two, and then Jin shared one, and Pastor John shared on last weekend. So I still got some of my slides that I have not managed to finish. Okay, so I thought today I like to just continue and finish this message about possessing the promise. A land or promises God has given, because we are now in the month of June, and in this month, obviously, it's a new theme. Okay, it's actually possessing the progressive revelation of who God is. All right, that's this month's theme. But let me finish this message about possessing the land. You've heard uh, from uh, obviously myself, uh, Jin as well, and Pastor John. Just how important it is. I don't know about you, but I sense in my heart and in my spirit, we are entering into a season where God wants to reveal things to us. But the question that I have is always, where are we? So where is our walk? How is our journey with God? Because things will happen in our lives. Okay? Some things that are good, some things that are challenging, like I was saying, some things that we may not fully understand or comprehend why it happens. Well, the reality is this. God wants to give us what He has promised us. And it was so well spoken, I think, a couple of weeks ago when Jin was talking about there is an enemy. All right? When you want to enter into the promised land where God gave Israel, the nation of Israel, to possess the land, he had to send spies into the land, correct? And the spies came back and said that there are giants in the land. What does that mean? That means they are enemies. They are the enemies of God. Interestingly, actually, just last night we were just doing a study, and it talks about the enemies, the enemies of Christ, the enemies that we've got to be aware of. But how you and I are going to visualize, how you and I are going to perceive and, and, and moving forward. I, I don't know about you, but I am someone who believes in a moving forward. I don't want to be the same as I was last year. I want to be different. I want to understand God's progressive, like I said this month, revelation of who He is. And I want to experience the power and the reality of Jesus. I don't just want to have a, a God that is just hate knowledge. But I want heart. I want experience. I want to say, God, that's why I love this song that we sang. Even though I don't see it, you are working. Even though I don't feel it, you're working. Because God never stops working. Jesus says, work while it is. Still day. Thank you. We're swapping over. You go. Ah, there we go. Jesus says, occupy till I come. That means work. That means keep busy in not just the things that we do, but the kingdom. Hallelujah. The kingdom of God. How much time do we put in into the kingdom? And I was speaking about this as the disciples, I'm sorry, as the, uh, uh, the spies came back, okay? Some of them are afraid. They say that we can't go in because there are giants in that land. Many a times we look at things based on what? Just the natural observation. When we look at certain things, we say, why wow, the economy is going to be tough. And I was just reading last night, and just watching some of the news, they were saying that, oh, everything is going to go up in price. You know that? Yeah. Petrol is going up. Diesel is going up. Food is going up. Somebody was saying that I'm going to go and get some tomatoes, American tomatoes. <laughs> okay. They said it's going to be like $20 a kg. I can't believe it. You know, all these things that we are going to experience, okay, and there is an element of fear. Speak to people around you. Some of them are concerned. Some of them are fearful. What's going to happen? How are we going to get our next dollar? How are we going to feed our family? These things are real. 
Okay? I'm not saying they are not real, but they are real. But you and I have got to look at it now from God's perspective, from a spiritual observation, not just a physical observation. Okay? When I look at all these things, you know what? My heart is not afraid. My heart is not troubled, but rather my heart rejoices. Why? Because it shows that we need to rely and depend on God. That is the ultimate thing. It's not I'm going to try and, and, and develop or come up with a new scheme or this or that. But God knows your heart. God knows how to provide for you. God knows your need. God knows what you need every day. When I wake up in the morning, I say, God, thank you that you are so faithful. Thank you that you know every need that I have. Dear Lord, I don't have to be filled with anxiety. I don't have to be filled with stress and worry. Because why? My life is in your hand. That's how I wake up every morning. I says, God, you have got it all in control. Some of the things that people do, you know, they, they are not nice things. Some of them are wicked things. You know, I just say, God, let not my heart be troubled. Put your trust in God because he's got it in control. Can I hear an amen? All right. He's got it in control. He's got your life in control. The Lord is with us. And I love it. Caleb and Joshua, the Lord is with us. Aren't you glad they didn't tell the Israelites, the Lord is not with us? And I want to declare it over your life today. The Lord is with us. So don't fret, don't worry. Don't worry about tomorrow or what it may bring. But just trust in Him. He has promised. He has promised. That's why I rely on the promises of God. I say, thank you, Lord. Your word says you will look after me. So I don't have to be fearful. I don't have to worry about my family and in terms of how, how is it all going to work out? How is it all going to happen? Some of us, listen to me carefully this afternoon, some of us, even in the midst of this uncertainty or trying times, God, I believe, is speaking to some of you to take steps of faith. Think about it for a moment. That means you're going to do something you have not done before. Some people will be thinking, you're crazy. Even in the midst of all this uncertainty, yet you are taking this step that you've never ventured into before. And if you're doing that because God has spoken to you to do that, I say to you today, good on you. Why? Because it's when you take that step, you know God will take the next step for you. And I'm taking some steps right now. I'm taking some steps, some big steps, in fact. Okay, venturing out into something that is like uncharted waters. How many of you have been to, to places you've never been to before? I mean, okay. But incredible though, when you go there, I mean, I was just thinking about this actually, like I think for Dennis and Heather, I know Dennis, you're watching online. When you guys go on a cruise, yeah? When you go on a cruise, you go to some of these places you've never been to before, all right? And you have the opportunity, obviously, on, when, you, when you're on that ship, everything is provided for. Correct? Your food, your drinks, uh, what else is there? Entertainment, everything is there. But when you get to a certain port, what happened? They tell you that you can come out of the ship. They can go out to look at some places that you've never seen before. So you go and the, and, and the, and the cruise captain will say to you or whoever, make sure you're back at a certain time because the cruise is going to take off. If you don't come back... But you have the opportunity to get out and look at places you've never been before. And what was your experience when you come back after visiting that place? You go, wow, that was incredible. Wow, I've never seen that before. So there was an element of wow. And the same thing. When God 
encourages you to take certain steps of faith, okay? Because why? He has promised. And I have seen over these last two years just the incredible things that God has begun to do in my life as I take that step. And I say, God, you have promised. I don't know what the outcome is going to be. I don't know what the future is going to be. But I am going to trust you as I take that step. Why? Because you have promised. Hallelujah. That you will look after. You have promised. The enemy's protection is gone. The enemy's protection is gone. Because God is with us. And I thank you, Lord. I know that the enemy will try his utmost best to distract, to discourage. And sometimes, you know, we are disappointed by things that happen in our lives. I know we, how many of you have ever had a, had a disappointment? <laughs> we all do, you see. But it's those things that we need to now change our focus, change our attention, and just say, God, I don't understand why it happened, but Lord, I thank you that you have promised. The enemy's protection is gone. He says, we will swallow them up. I love every little statement that Joshua, Caleb, when he spoke to the people, as he addressed the nation of Israel, we will swallow them up. Can you imagine that? Man, these guys are saying, these guys are, these, these enemies, they are giants. And they are grasshoppers based on their own view. Imagine a grasshopper swallowing up a giant. That's a different mindset, isn't it? Yeah? He says, we will swallow them up. Why? Because both reports are based partly on observation, but also on what perception filters each group carried into the experience. See that? How we view things. What is it that we uh, uh, look at it based on what perception we have? If you expect failure, guess what? You will fail. If you expect to be terrified, you will indeed be terrified. So your expectation and my expectation in these coming weeks, these coming months, as we go through, all right, all the changes that are happening. We've got a new government in place now, all right, obviously, you know, for Australia, and there'll be many changes. Some people are looking at some of the things that they thought is going to be good, that's going to be happening. Some people will focus or filter on, wow, some of these things and decisions they're going to make. Oh, God, help us. See that? So you get these two different categories that we are looking at and our nation is looking at. Okay? Because for some people, let me just be very honest, for some people I know, some people's hearts are pretty troubled. Yeah, yet I say, even to myself, I say, God, you are in control. You are in control. God, I don't want to expect failure. God, I don't want to be terrified. God, I don't want to be anxious. I don't want to be overly concerned about everything. Faith-based research, listen carefully, is quite different from fear-based research. Why? Because it used entirely different conclusions. If it is just based on fear, everything that you are going to go into in the next few weeks, in the next few months, in this coming year, because if it is just fear-based, everything that surrounds you, you will be living your life full of anxiety full of worry, full of uncertainty. But when it is faith-based, like I remember when I was saying, Pastor John was speaking about this last week as well, don't let it be fear-based, but fear with faith. Because faith is the thing that's going to carry you through. Faith, the Bible says what? Is the substance of things hoped for. The evidence not seen yet. I love it. We haven't seen it yet, but it is faith-based. 
It is saying, God, you are in control. God, you are in charge, okay? The future is different from the past. Past fears, past failures, past ruts and rituals, even past successes are less important than trusting God to define the future and to decree the next steps. And I love it last night. I mean, this is such an amazing thing, just a confirmation of what we studied last night. You know, Paul says in Philippians, now one thing I do, what do I do? He says, I leave the past behind. Okay? Past successes, past failures, past uncertainties, past victories, everything. When you think about Paul, incredible man of God, what he has went through, what he's been through in his life, but yet he is still able to make those statements that we now read in the Bible. This is one thing I do. I leave the past behind and I press forward toward the heavenward, toward the call of God upon my life. This is what he does. Okay? Now, like I said, and I will, I will uh, 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 emphasize again, you know, things happen in our lives. Good things and sometimes things that are unpleasant. But we need to learn now to leave that past behind and keep pressing forward and keep trusting God now to define the future, okay, and to decree the next steps. What is the next step you got to take? Think about it for a moment this afternoon. What are the next steps God is calling you to take? Some of these steps, like I said, is going to be steps of faith. Steps that you're going to venture into that you've never ever done before. Okay, you heard this saying before, if you keep doing the same thing over and over again and try to expect a different result, you're kidding yourself. Okay? But when you take steps of faith into what God has asked you to do, that's where the element of trust comes in. Where you go, God, I am going to trust you. I know that you will decree it because once God decrees it, guess what? It's going to happen. When he says something, it will happen. As God guides you and help you to process, okay? Success in the future, listen carefully now, demands a radical surgery from the things of the past. Radical. You've got to cut things off. It's painful. It's painful. This, this week, you know, I met with somebody that I thought, oh, thank the Lord, you know, that I have to do that radical surgery. <laughs> you know, something that, that happened that I thought, oh, God, it was painful to, 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 uh, 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 to cut that part off because so much effort was put in and so much, you know, uh, energy and resource. But I say, God, you know the best. It has to be cut off. When it cuts off, it's radical. It's, it's painful. It's something that I never thought was going to happen. But God said, you've got to cut that off. Why? Because if I want to look into the future, trusting that tomorrow will resemble yesterday is an attitude based in our fleshly need for control. Real success places all trust and behaviors in the Word of God. So I'm not just trusting God because I'm thinking, God, Tomorrow, is it going to be the same as yesterday? Is my future going to resemble some of the things that I've done in the past? And God is saying to you, no. Because it's going to be different. It's going to be, <laughs> well, let me use this word again, it's going to be radical. When you think about something that's radical, there's something like, wow, I've never done this before. But I'm doing it. Why? Because I'm trusting God. Because God says, He has decreed the steps for me. He has laid out the plans. And I say, God, 
I'm going to do it. It's going to be radical. Something that will get me out of my comfort zone. How many of you like comfort zone? <laughs> A lot of people do, don't they? Because the things, once you step out of something different, it's scary. It is scary. Because you're not used to it. When you're out of your comfort zone, sometimes, you know, it's great to just stretch ourselves out of those comfort zones. And I say to people, I think one of the reasons I believe that you and I are still here today, we are still alive, we are still kicking, we are still breathing, we are still eating, we are still... Do you know why? Because there is still some stretching to do. There is still some stretching. God wants to stretch us. He wants us to experience what it is. And I believe this with all of my heart is that when God stretches me, He wants me to once again turn my eyes upon Jesus. He wants me to look to Him, not just to the things around me, not to the surroundings, not to what people can do for me. Now, the reality is God can always use people. And He often does. But it's my eyes and my focus is not on the people, but rather it's on Him. And he will then bring it to pass. He will then organize it. Proverbs 4, we know the scripture. Trust in the Lord with all your heart. There you go. Who can quote that for me? <laughs> there we go. Trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not on your own understanding. But in all your ways, what do you do? Acknowledge him first. In all your ways, acknowledge Him and He will direct your path. See, many times we say, God, direct my path, but I don't want you to be involved in my life. Direct my path. You know, have you heard this, have you heard this saying before? God, heal me. I don't want to get sick. Oh God, touch my life, but please don't take away things that are precious to me. See that? The Bible says, as we trust in the Lord, number one, and then we need to what? lean not unto our own understanding. Because, come on, let's be honest. Most of us, there's a certain ways, certain patterns, certain beliefs that we have gathered over the years. And we thought, oh, this is the way I'm going to do it. This is the way it's going to be done. God says, lean not on your own understanding, but in all your ways, what? Acknowledge Him. Once you do that, I can assure you, God will direct your path. It's incredible. You know, when God directs your path, you find that things just begin to fall into its place. When you go this way, into God saying, it's this way. And when you do that, what happened? The door swing opens. The door swing opens. Oh, by the way, it was interesting. The, the, uh, the, the builder uh, that is there today, um, a friend of uh, Jin, uh, his name is David. I was talking to David this morning, I was there, and then he was saying to me, he said, oh, these carpets, you know, they, they look really good. I said, yeah, we got them for free. He says, for free? He said, how did you do that? I said, the Lord has provided for us. He said to me, can you get some for me? <laughs> and I said to David, I said, David, Sure thing. Why not? Do you want me to ring up these people and find out where there's any more carpets left that you can have some? He said, I'd like to take some and maybe put onto my garage, you know, on the floor. And my wife has got some exercise equipment. It would be nice for them. So guess what? I rang my good friend, praise the name of Jesus Christ, my Lord. I rang him. I said, hey, Billy, have you got any more carpets there at the place? You know, it, uh, you know, we like to get some, some more. So he said to me, how many more do you need? <laughs> and I said, David, how many do you need? David said to me, oh, maybe about a hundred, maybe it should be enough. I said, David, you should get a, bit, a few more just in case you need more. So I said to my friend, Billy, Billy, I need 150. Billy said, oh, 150, not a problem. Meet me tomorrow at the same time. 
So I went to the workshop this afternoon, this, uh, to the warehouse, and I contacted David. I said, David, it's available for you. It's a blessing. David said to me, really? You mean, really, I can go and get it? I said, yeah. In fact, I said, I'll come with you tomorrow. We'll go there. We'll get this carpet for you that you want. So praise God. I'm going to share with David tomorrow. Hallelujah. Say, David, this is the blessing of God. I don't know. What, is he a Christian? No, he's not. Now praise the Lord. Lord, touch him in Jesus' name. Minister your love to him. So I'm going to meet David tomorrow. We're going to go and harvest the land. Hallelujah. And get some stuff with him. I said to David, yep, tomorrow meet, meet me. We'll, I'll help you. And then interestingly though, after I've done that today, and guess what he said to me? He said, oh, you know the timber at the moment is very expensive to buy. I went to uh, Bunnings and they are very expensive. But then he was talking to me. He said, guess what? I'm willing to travel further and get you some cheaper timber. Hallelujah. There you go. I said, David, really? Will you do that? He said, yeah, yeah. We're having such a good talk this afternoon. So I'm getting to know David, hallelujah. And I'm saying, yeah, God, you are so good. You make a way, you prepare a way as we trust you. But let me say something to us today, okay? Everything, everything that you are going to venture into, everything that you're going to do, can I encourage you? Always, always put the kingdom of God there. Okay? Whatever you do in your business, in your personal life, in your study, in your relationships, in everything, always, always involve the kingdom of God. Why? Because when you do that, I am a firm believer Everything that you need, God will provide. I want to say that again. When you involve the kingdom of God, when you have a mindset that things about the kingdom, everything that you need, God will provide for you. You will not be someone who is begging for bread. But rather, you will experience that manna that comes from heaven. Hallelujah. The manna that will continue to provide for you until you enter into that land. The manna stops. And God is saying, now I want you to experience, there we go, this month's theme, a progressive revelation of His promise. The word is, Progressive. That means it is keeping on, keep on going. Progressive. And I don't know about you, but I want to experience in this year and the next two years the plan, the goal. Three years, we're in this building, and I'm saying to God, God, in the name of Jesus, thank you, Father. You unfold your progressive revelation to every one of us, no matter what that area is for you, because God, we're going to speak to you about it. But for me, God has spoke, spoken to me that in this next three years, His progressive revelation of His provision. That's me. But for you, you seek God and say, God, what is He going to show you? What is his progressive revelation for you is going to be in these next three years? As you lay a hole, as you take a hole of what God has for you, okay? Trust God and all he has. So leaders from each tribe, remember what I mentioned, they are invited, but few actually succeed. Oh, that's a challenge. We are all invited. We're all invited. But would you be one of those that would progressively move forward? While kingdom ministries require everyone be invited to participate, it is foolish to expect everyone to approach transformational ministries with the same degree of faith. That is a challenging thought. See that? Because we're all going to approach it differently. 
we are all going to look at things differently. But the invitation for you to go in and to possess the land is always there. It's always part of God's plan. But it requires faith. God will accomplish His mission for the church, whether we are all ready or not. Hallelujah. Jesus says, I will build my church and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. See that one thing I love about the kingdom of God is that God always moves forward. He's always moving forward. He's always taking us on an incredible journey. As long as we are willing to be part of all that he is doing. Be part of all that he has for us. And as you take this next step, I know in my heart today, some of you that are here, you are taking some new steps. Some of you heard this message today, you may be saying, I need to take some new steps. I need to hear the decree of what God is saying to me to do in this coming week, in this coming month, this year. You see, if you don't take new steps, you're always going to be living in the past. You're always going to be thinking, is tomorrow going to be the same as yesterday? Don't have to be. But if you are going to take new steps, you are going to experience new things. You're going to look at life and go, thank the Lord that I'm able to step into something new. Able to step into experiencing God's love and God's reality, God's power, God's provision. Oh, I just love it. God's provision never, ever runs dry. Hallelujah. Always there. For my God shall supply all your Yes, not all your wants. But my God shall supply all your needs according to His riches in Christ Jesus. According to His riches. God wants us to experience. Stand with me this afternoon. Come on, Darren, why don't you come to the piano? And I know, like I'm saying that some of you are going to take some new steps. Some of you are going to look through this filter, okay, this perception. Don't be terrified because if you're always looking at being terrified, you will be terrified. If you're always looking at failure or it's impossible, it will be impossible. If you're always looking at it's too difficult, then it will always be difficult. But if you look with the perception and the filter of faith, you begin to look at things differently. You begin to say, God has promised He is with us. The enemy's protection is gone and we will swallow them up. Hallelujah. And we will march into our destiny what God has prepared for us. This afternoon, with your eyes closed, if you know that God has spoken to you and you are going to step into something new, lift your hand, hallelujah, quickly. Or if you know this afternoon God is saying to you, I don't want you to live like the way you've lived yesterday, hallelujah. I want you to live with a new dimension of faith, hallelujah. With a new dimension of faith, with faith that is able to believe God for the extraordinary. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Father, this afternoon as we commit our lives to you, we commit our family, we commit our career, our jobs, our future. We thank you, God. Our future in you is always bright. Hallelujah. Is when we walk away from you, Lord, we don't know what the future is. We don't know. We are uncertain. But with you, the future is always bright. Because with you, nothing is impossible. 
with you, God, all things are possible. Lord, we pray this afternoon, our faith, our lives, our focus, be drawn to Jesus. Once again, we acknowledge you as the author and finisher of our faith, the one who started it all and the one who would end it all. And Lord, I pray today, your Holy Spirit will quicken this word into our hearts and to remind us once again your plan, your purposes for each one of us, your destiny for each one of us. Thank you, God. Hallelujah.